You're listening to Chugging Bleach, the only podcast where the bounce count. Welcome to Chugging Bleach, the only Bleach podcast where we review the Bleach movies. I'm Bob Video Games. I'm here with my usual co-host, Dan Video Games. Before the mic wouldn't work to record audio, but now it can. Chris Wolfhart. Hello. And Dr. Agro. Was was this his plan? <laughs> I sure hope not, Doctor. <laughs> As I mentioned, uh, we do review the Bleach movies on this show, and this time we are reviewing movie two, The Diamond Dust Rebellion. This is the one about Hitsugaya, because he run a lot of popularity polls. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Every time Bleach started to slip a little bit in the ratings, it's like, here comes Hitsugaya running up <laughs> to lift the ratings back up to acceptable. <laughs> but before we get into it, Chris, can you tell me about Patreon and how they might be able to listen to this show a little early? Well, if you would like to listen to this show early, you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash gbpodcasts. For as little as $5 a month, you get access to many benefits such as early access to this, Chugging Bleach, and another show, Pokemon Go to the Movies, wherein, uh, like how we review all of Bleach on this show, on that one we review every Pokemon movie. Both of these shows will be continuing until everyone is dead. Not just us, everyone. <laughs> everyone on planet Earth. Because if we die, someone will upload all these audio files to, to the AI and have them generate new episodes oh, of Chugging no. Bleach based on Bleach episodes that may or may not exist. <laughs> I want to listen to those episodes. That sounds good. Agro, why are you lying to me? The podcast <laughs> is on fire. <laughs> but if you give at least $5 to our Patreon, you will get these shows one month early. In fact, if you're listening to this on YouTube, there is already another show waiting episode waiting for you on the Patreon. Uh, you also get extended versions of other shows and cut content from those shows when indeed such things exist to be given to you. And a patron exclusive show, one a month where you get to vote on what good or bad thing we have to watch and then talk about. And if it's a bad thing, you also get a commentary track and we don't release those publicly. So if you give to our Patreon, you have uh, somewhere in the ballpark of a thousand hundred thousand. <laughs> commentary tracks and shows to go with those commentary tracks uh that's patreon.com slash gb podcast if you don't have any money it always helps immensely to tell your friends rate this podcast on your podcast app of choice or like the video on youtube that's patreon.com slash gb podcast thank you chris and before we get to the summary everyone remember to stick around we are doing the review and our fun little segments like best dressed after that so you know you want to make it through this <laughs> <laughs> you want to make it through the entirety of us talking about this movie. I'm, I'm not sure that there's, this is dense material that will take a lot of bearing through it. <laughs> <laughs> we watched the same movie, right? Yeah. <laughs> Chris, can uh, you take us through this um, fine movie? <laughs> this is <yeah>. fine. <laughs> yeah, I can. <laughs> We open on an establishing shot of some farmland, like a weirdly fast cloud is going over it. Inside the cloud is like a royal procession with like on Myoji and the guys who set up the backgrounds at Kabuki shows and are wearing all black because you're not supposed to see them. All that kind of shit. A guy in a mask is doing like a ceremonial dance. There's like a palakin, a palakin, a palakin. I don't fucking know how you say that word because I've never had to pronounce it before. A uh, palanquin. I, I don't memorize every third gen Pokemon's name. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> but the things that royalty sit in that are carried by people, like there's four poles that they carry. Some soul reapers are watching. Rongiku shows up and kind of Karen's at them a little bit and is like, stop slacking off. The NPCs ask what this is about and Rongiku says, oh, it's orders from the royal family. They're guarding a treasure called the Oin. And that it's very, very powerful and moves every decade or so. And then she pretends to know what it is, but then has to admit she doesn't. It's very funny. This is where you laugh. Uh, hits a guy is floating in the sky near it, and Rangiku reports to him. They stare at the cloud, and Rangiku's like, it's magnificent. And hits a guy's like, royalty sucks. I used to live in a slum. <laughs> Fuck all these motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> no, hits a guy, you'll get in trouble. <laughs> But Hitsugaya, we are part of the royal right-wing death squad. <laughs> Look, we don't like talking about that. We have to pretend we don't do a genocide like every other decade. <laughs> no, we get to blame that on, like, one individual group that we can exile every time. 
<laughs> this time it was Ken Pachi's fault. Oh, that's actually too believable. <laughs> <laughs> we can't get rid of him. He's really strong. <laughs> He'll kill us all. <laughs> then we get like a really bad CG shot of like the sky. The bad CG shot attacks the royal procession and like some ball lightning starts owning the generic guards. Yeah, it looks like that thing from Dot Hack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, which thing from Dot Hack? Like, like, n not the floating testicle thing. Yeah, that thing. <laughs> it, it's it's just two spheres. Not everything is that ball sack from Dot Hack. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> you have got to move on and heal, Bob. <laughs> no. I have never seen Dot Hack and am therefore undamaged. Oh. Well, we know what, what podcast starts after chugging bleach heads. Oh, my God. Uh. <laughs> so there is hell after death. <laughs> So the ball lightning is owning the guards. The generic soul reapers move in to help and they also get owned. The ball lightning is a filler iron car that's like one step above the of the French waiter. <laughs> when I saw this, I was uh -huh. like this. <laughs> they look like a Mega Man ZX villain. <laughs> like ZX Advent. <laughs> I mean... Inti create characters all kind of look like filler anime characters. Uh huh. <laughs> so this makes sense. For me, she's got like blue hair and a weird skull on her head, and she's like an anime lady. And part of me was like, this is what every person on Twitter who's like anime profile pictures and rubber plies <laughs> sees every time. <laughs> this is a weird conglomerate of what they generalize that to. Yeah, it's like if you type in blue hair anime girl into like the AI generator, you just get this character. <laughs> With extra fingers. <laughs> she uses like an electric whip and gets it around Rangiku's sword. Luckily, Rangiku is the one soul reaper whose power is for her sword to stop being a sword. <laughs> and then they start fighting. There's also like a fire one who's owning the procession. And Rangiku also engages with them, and it's like a red twin of the blue one. And then Hitsugaya, like, deploys ice at her, and she giggles and runs away. <laughs> I think that we can do that to describe this whole movie. <laughs> she giggles and runs away. <laughs> yeah. Hitsugaya pursues and then gets stabbed by a dude in a cloak. Hitsugaya's like, who the fuck are you? But they, he, he completely ignores him, and they start fighting. They seem to know Hitsugaya somehow, but then run away. Yeah, he's like, you haven't changed at all, and hops away. Rangiku reports that the Oin is missing, but Hitsugaya doesn't respond and pursues the masked guy into the smoke. <laughs> and then we get the Bleach logo, and it freezes because this is a Hitsugaya movie. Okay, real quick. <laughs> it absolutely kills me that she's like, the Oin is missing. But earlier they covered that no one outside of the royal right? family is allowed to see it. And I'm like, how do you know that? <laughs> she runs up like, where's the Owen? We don't fucking know. Right. We don't know what it looks like. But like dozens of soldiers sitting there in that moment. Blame, is this a, is this a trick? Am I being is this entrapment? <laughs> when that guy stabbed Hitsugaya, I legitimately thought it was because he looked in the wagon and he shouldn't have. <laughs> Oh, man, imagine this movie had cool ideas like that. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Ichigo is flying because he can do that? Well, it, he's next to his house, but it's also a forest. Look, it's really fucking unclear where this is. It Bleach is weird. What I've gathered is they can fly kind of in the real world, but they cannot in soul society. Right. The weirder thing here for me is he's deep in a forest. He goes, this place is close to his, my house. And I'm like, excuse me? Well, when you can walk in the air, walking distances. <laughs> I think they say sometimes that Karakura Town is supposed to be like not rural, but it's like not it's not part of like the Tokyo metropolitan area. Like, it actually is surrounded by, like, farmland. Yeah, so this could be somewhat near his town. Just probably not that close to his house. And he could sense something was weird, so he came out here. Even though Ichigo's known to have really bad senses, we're going with it anyway. Okay. Yeah, he ends up in some woods, and he just stands there and touches an invisible wall. And then he cuts through the invisible wall and ends up fucking somewhere. I don't fucking know how this is supposed to work because it's never in any actual canon content. <laughs> yeah, it's a, I, they got a barrier from Shakugan no Shana. <laughs> <laughs> I legitimately thought he sliced through an illusion to see the past until <laughs> Soy Phone shows up and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> the stealth force shows up and is like, 
postures around Ichigo like they're going to attack. And then Soy Fawn shows up to save all of them a beating. That would not have gone very well for the Stealth Force. <laughs> you know, he was like, I'm the substitute Soul Reaper. Do you remember when I whipped all your captain's asses like two months ago? No, we all share one brain cell. <laughs> There's literally nobody you have above Kenpachi and Byaki, the two guys I beat. <laughs> a stealth force is kind of known for being the worst at owning up to their name. So I feel like they're not really on top of enemy profile bios of like, can we take this guy? They always have confidence that the answer is yes. Uh, that's, that's, what, <laughs> yeah. that's what, you know, is great about them. They got a can-do attitude. They never can, but... <laughs> Spoilers for this movie, this this whole movie is set in like the five minute span from a couple chugging bleaches ago where Soul Society is unbelievably unreasonable. <laughs> <laughs> like this whole movie is set in that narrow purview of time. So she acts like a bitch to Ichigo for no reason. And he's like, this is right near my house. There's This is right near my house and there's all these corpses. I'm going to notice. So I was like, well, you're not a real soul reaper, so you can't know. And then they fuck off. <laughs> they didn't pull away. Yeah, the way they teleport away makes no sense because it seems like they just somehow shunt Ichigo back out of their dimension. They yeah, wait, yeah, wait, what the hell? Wait, I'm is sorry. Going they on? have not shunted him out yet. They have not shunted him out yet. Okay. That is true. Ashida shows up to where Ichigo crossed dimensions, and then we cut back, and Ichigo got some form of explanation without us that we didn't see. And then Soy Fawn says cryptic shit and kicks him out of the second dimension. She, she like, like highlights him and right clicks and is like, <laughs> kick from group. When, <laughs> and Windows 98 log off sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Sheeta walks up and he's like, what happened? I knew some shit was going on since yesterday because I'm actually good at this sensing shit, unlike you. <laughs> then it starts to snow and then Hitsugaya shows up and collapses. Ichigo asks what happens, and hits a guy says, Squid Games! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Kosaka! <laughs> uh, we cut to Soul Society, and we get the rare nighttime establishing shot of Soul Society. This isn't canon, which means we have to have a fucking captain's meeting. That's the yeah. only thing they can come up with when Kubo <laughs> yeah, didn't write it. So bad. <laughs> okay, we need to write a scene in Bleach. What do we do? A bureaucratic meeting of hypocrites. Can, can, <laughs> Look, can there's I 800 get... million characters. We got to get them all in there. <laughs> we got 100 episodes of this already, Todd. Can you write anything else? No. Why would you do anything in the civil society without a meeting? It needs a meeting or else we can't do anything. I'm sorry. <laughs> And they need to see the meeting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, it's really obvious that, that Soul Society is, like, based on the Shinsengumi, and most of those guys were illiterate, murderous dogs, so I don't think they'd be this big on bureaucracy. <laughs> <laughs> so Ifan says someone stole the MacGuffin, and hits a guy went after whoever stole the MacGuffin and is missing. Rangiku gets indignant because Soifan basically sets it up to sound like he abandoned his post, when in reality he went after the guy who stole the thing. Yamamoto says squad 10 is going to be confined to barracks and we might get rid of the entire squad because of this. And Rangiku's like, what the fuck? And he's like, no, this <laughs> MacGuffin's super important. We will not elaborate why. <laughs> and we, and we got to we gotta go arrest Hitsugaya because trying to get the most important artifact in Soul Society history back is not an excuse for not filing a report. <laughs> this movie makes so much sense. And it's <laughs> so good. I love when they write him like this. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Man, do I have an arc for you? <laughs> we cut to the Soul Society barracks and Squad 10 is under house arrest and also under suspicion of being involved. I think they would have had a lower body count if they had been complicit. Yeah, there were a lot of dead Soul Reapers. <laughs> yeah. Squad 10 objects, but Rangiku just hands over her sword. Rinji and Rukia, who are there for some reason, try to comfort her. And then Renji's like, don't worry, Rangiku, I'm sure he's not a traitor like Gein. And that makes her feel worse. I, okay, we need to talk about it. Okay. How can they confiscate their soul reaper blades? Their Zanpakuto. Zanpakuto's? How, how can they do that? Aren't those because, form because, drum? Because this, is, because this is a movie and it's therefore also filler. <laughs> And then they take away um, Ichigo's soul. <laughs> <laughs> 
This is not even close to the, the to the amount of stupid shit surrounding the Zanpakdos that is in this movie. <laughs> no, no, but it's just one of the hundreds of things. Uh, then R Rinji and Ruki get thrown out because they have to literally lock all of Squad 10 in their house because I, I don't think they really know what house arrest means. I think they just kind of guessed what they thought it meant and nobody researched it. <laughs> Look, it's different in the civil society. No one needs to eat, so they can just shove them in the box. <laughs> Rangiku asks Renji to look into the person hits a guy was chasing, even though Rangiku's only has yeah, it was a guy, right? That, that, he doesn't <laughs> you, have any. You find this thing. out? Um, no. Do you know my skill set? <laughs> it's turn sword into monkey. Job. End of list. <laughs> my skill set is to gas up a villain so that when Ichigo or Kenpachi or Byakuya show up to actually fight them, we know that they're cool and strong. Uh, we get a hits a guy, a flashback of him in school with who is obviously the masked guy. He looks like Gein with black hair, <laughs> except he opens his eyes sometimes. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's way less cool than Gein. I feel like to give, give him way too much credit. They train and are friends and then he dies. <laughs> <laughs> How could this have happened? Uh, hits a guy wakes up in Ichigo's room. We learned that Ichigo owns a guitar. We didn't know that, I don't think. I mean, that makes <laughs> sense given his wardrobe in this film. Right. Ichigo walks in and is like, why is the stealth force looking for you? And then hits a guy won't tell him. And then hits a guy just tells him that an important thing was stolen and says Ichigo is too stupid to understand. And Ichigo says, why don't you fucking simmer down? You're like 4'6". <laughs> fucking go to sleep, you dumb brat. Then his stab wound acts up and he falls asleep curled up like a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love this because he's just bleeding into Ichigo's bed and Ichigo's like, I'll call Orihime in the morning. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> what are you doing? Get her now! <laughs> well, well it's, it's like after 7 p.m. She's probably settled in. I don't want to ask her to come over. <laughs> as if Orihime... As if Ichigo called Orihime after 7 p.m., she'd show up in like a nanosecond slavering like a dog. <laughs> yeah. uh, that would involve Orihime doing a thing in this film, and we cannot have that. I'm mm. sorry. But hits a guy seethes a little bit. He leaves in the middle of the night and leaves like his captain's Hayori behind. Ichigo cuts him off and says he should have left through the front door and not snuck sneak around like a rat. Hits a guy is so fucking lame at the moment that Ichigo can see through him. He's like, no, I know what you're gonna do, and that that would be the moment I started self reflection. It's like this <laughs> this fucking dude can see through me. This dude can't see through a window. <laughs> He asks who Kosaka is and even figures out that Kosaka is probably the guy that stole that thing. This is like the smartest Ichigo's been in a while. Yeah. Or maybe the dumbest Bleach plot has been in a while. It can be both. Yeah. <laughs> Regression to the mean. Hits a guy, swipes at him, and Ichigo's like, dude, you're bleeding out. Come on. Ichigo says, look, either turn yourself into the stealth force or come back to my house so you can get stitched up. Then the fire and lightning twins show up and throw a fireball at him. They keep their swords in their heads. <laughs> I've, see, I've seen a lot of unconventional places to, to put a sheath or a holster in my time on this planet, but back of the head cross draw has got to be a new one on me. It just seems so safe, though. <laughs> Ichigo asks Hitsugaya what's going on, and Hitsugaya attacks him, presumably to get him away, away from the fight, and then they just attack him anyway. Attack Ichigo anyway. Good fucking plan, genius. Uh, the lightning one throws a shot down at where Ichigo landed, and he bloody gets bloodied up a little. The two are shot. It's like, our cool team attack didn't work. It's like when fucking Jason Burter are stunned that their team attack didn't hurt Goku at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they do another one, and then Ichigo negates it with Getsuga and slings another at him, and they're like, oh, fuck, this is a real character. We have to leave. <laughs> and then they do. And for Ichigo was actually hurt enough to collapse. I'm sorry, you can't sell these guys, these two being strong enough to make that happen. Right, like that doesn't make sense, even with anything else that happened in this movie. And it's really good because Ichigo takes it like a stoic statue, right? And then goes, oh, I'm bleeding. <laughs> he just passes out. <laughs> yeah, and he tries to say something to guy, but guy leaves. Rukia and Renji wake him up by Renji just punching him. Like he gave Ichigo a black eye. Ichigo is understandably like a little pissed off and they start to fight. Uh, Rukia asks him what happened. He mumbles something about Hitsugaya and they're like, tell us more. And they go back to his house and see that Hitsugaya left like his captain's Hayori. Rinji gets indignant and Rukia like starts really grilling him on what happened. 
Nichigo says he went to get the MacGuffin back and tells them about Kusaka. And there's like, Rinji, I guess this is your job now. Go back and find out who Kusaka is. We sure do love having to fucking... <laughs> I feel like... You know that part in Attack of the Clones where Obi-Wan has to go find the thing in the library? <sighs> yes. Uh. Ble Bleach filler loves that scene. <laughs> <laughs> We get another flashback, and and him and Kusaka had to fight over who gets Hyorin Maru. Yeah, I guess that's how that works in this movie. Yup. Yeah. Mm hmm. Then Hitsugaya wakes up in an abandoned warehouse because Karakura Town is a defunct shithole that, that got really hit by the bubble era. <laughs> <ending>. <laughs> Apparently, it just yep. next to the the one that Shinji and his friends are in. <laughs> I hope so, where there are multiple neighborhoods with this shit in Karakura Town. <laughs> uh, he's stumbling around Hurt and the mask guy and the two Aaron Carr and Soul Society and Kusaka mumbles some shit about how he has the same power as Hitsugaya. I love this quote. As long as he and I have the same power, he has no place here. He has no choice but to submit to my will. And I'm like, movie! What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> right? I was like, is that is that a cool mechanic they're going to explain? Or is that just some <laughs> random movie villain shit he's saying? Uh, it appears here in the script, I've got about two sentences. So I'm going to say some words now. Banana. Orange juice. <laughs> uh, Rukia, Chad, Orihime, Ichigo, and Urahara have a meeting and they recount Hitsugaya's past. Uh, they want to talk to Momo, but she's still too mentally ill for that. <laughs> I know, they're like, she's not well, and I'm like, hmm, do they mean it the way that I think they should? It's so weird to have a Hits Guy movie and not have Momo in it for a second. Yes, that is fucking insane. They talk about how Hits a Guy is an emotionally distant dipshit, or he may like, that means he's strong, then she like looks at Ichigo. <laughs> 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 and then Ichigo, uh, Ichigo, like, picks up a rock and throws it through, like, four of his own glass walls <laughs> yeah. and hits a guy. He's like, strong people don't burden those around them by not letting them help. <laughs> or he may just throws him this look. <laughs> like, who the fuck just said that? Are we not in the middle of an arc where this is literally your entire character? Urahar drinks tea and is like, I'm going to go do some research. You should all go look for Hitsugaya. I'm getting deleted from the movie right now. <laughs> As blocks of him disappear. <laughs> Cut to Rangiku. Renji's causing a scene outside because she's not allowed to have visitors. The dipshit they have guarding the door is uh, the dipshit who got owned so hard that he cried in the bount arc. The guy with the bowling ball shikai. Mm. Yep. Renji just starts mocking him until he gets upset. Then Captain Kyoraku shows up and is like, well, I'll, I'll go in with Renji so it'll be fine, right? And then and this dude's like, oh, yeah, it's the guy who is ambiguously one of the strongest captains. I better just let him go in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is who this guy is. Remember mm -hmm. that, listener. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Luckily, Rangiku knows nothing about Kusaka, so this is all pointless. Yeah, because why would she? Why? <laughs> Uh, then we get a filler conversation where Nanao is there and she reiterates the, everything that the movie has set up so far. And then Krug is like, oh, you're so smart for being able to state shit we all knew. And then she goes, people contain multitudes. And everyone's like, okay. <laughs> then Renji gives Rangiku Hitsugai as Haori, Haori. And they talk about nothing. More flashback. Kusaka meets Hyorin Maru and takes him as his Zanpakuto. And it has a really weird song that is different from every other song in Bleach. This movie has weird scoring in general. When you say more flashbacks, that implies an additive nature to the flashback. <laughs> and yet, every flashback we get basically is the same flashback, but mildly different. Kusaka and Hitsugaya got the same sword somehow, and then Hitsugaya <laughs> wakes up on the rocks by a riverbank. How? How did this happen? I don't... How much of this is just going to be him stumbling around injured? It's what the fans wanted. <laughs> it, well, it, it, that, that's how you make him look angsty and cute. Oh, yeah. I much preferred when he was just hitting on a, a, yeah, a ten year old. I was gonna say, like, <laughs> why wasn't this movie about him and Ichigo's younger sister hitting it off? <laughs> <laughs> 
God. <laughs> uh, a lot of stuff in this movie looks very nice, even if it's wildly unlike a Bleach movie. <laughs> yeah. It, it could be like the uh, Bleach movie equivalent of the, the the kids' detective agency for fucking Case Close, right? <laughs> yeah. This hits oh. a guy and them teaming up. Oh, man. Then we could have a Professor Agasta stand in. Oh, God. That'd it'd be so good. It'd be your horror and make terrible jokes. It'd be great. That'd be so good. Oh, man. That's a way better movie. <laughs> But I don't know, Dan. Can we really sell that? <laughs> the Bleach Case Closed crossover would actually be a very good movie. I would love to watch Ichigo follow Conan around as his dumbass tries to help him solve a mystery. You just know that Ichigo... Oh, man. Co Conan also kicks a soccer ball really yes. hard. <laughs> no, it's really good. I don't think they spend a whole day around Conan before he goes, well, let me get this straight. You can die at will and possess something. I don't know what. And that guy's already dead. <laughs> Just pointing at eats the guy. Conan can do that thing he does sometimes where he kicks like a motorcycle helmet into somebody and kills them instantly, but it just hits Renji. Oh, that was, <laughs> that was so good. He needs to do that more. <laughs> Uh, Nanao and Kyoraku are in the fucking archives and can't find Kusaka because he was deleted from the archive memory. How much of Soul Society's time is spent <laughs> dealing with the fact they deleted their own files? This is really what the stealth squad is for. They're not a <laughs> combat unit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, for, for doing the research or deleting things haphazardly? <laughs> oh yeah, they stalk the library, deleting things from history. <laughs> at random. <laughs> okay, they do seem pretty stealthy at that, because every time people are surprised. <laughs> but luckily they find him in the population records. Kyoraku then says, well, the archive says he's dead, but... And then they tra and he trails off. And then he tells to now, go find out how he died. And then he fucks off to do whatever. One of the twins is stalking, like, one of the Arncar twins is stalking him like he wouldn't just vaporize her by looking at her. Yeah. yeah. Then he realizes he's being stalked and run down a hallway and it starts to snow and the guy who's obviously Kusaka shows up and he's like, you're really smart. Too bad you're about to be killed by Captain Hitsugaya and throws <laughs> ice at him and then they start to fight. God. The delivery is so good. <laughs> uh, Hitsugaya is now sleeping inside a shrine in a Neo level. <laughs> it's being surrounded by soul reapers Izuru and Shuhei show up and tell him to surrender he comes out and says fuck you <laughs> why are you here well we had to be in the movie <laughs> and Sh Shuhei says I'm gonna bring you in and Hitsugai says die then <laughs> they fight a little bit and then he gets impaled on a hado and they're like look look please please stop resisting captain hits the guy if you actually start trying you're gonna rinse all of us really easily <laughs> uh and then he releases his sword he goes full bonkai even here's where the movie fails kyoraku got rinsed off screen so upsetting yeah yep it could not possibly this movie does it, okay there's not being perfectly on par with the source material. There's going off canon. There's doing things that don't make a lot of sense. This is so beyond all of that. It is flying in the face of everything you know about so many different characters at so many different moments. It's like, yeah, of course. Of course he would just job to that. Are you are you insane? Who wrote this and who approved this? At least in the Bount arc, it was like, no, when they fight the captains, they all get cleared easy. None of the captains even break a sweat. Yeah, yeah like you cannot have captain's job like the like line one <laughs> and even if this dude was as powerful as Hitsugaya, there's no way for, 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 literally no way i don't <laughs> yeah, you can't yeah, the sell whole, me on this the whole like yes kenpachi and Byakuya get gassed up a lot in the soul society arc but the way they treat kyoraku and ukitake is like no they're actually as strong or maybe stronger yeah is how they treat it. Mm -hmm. we, we're like when Yamamoto throws the temper tantrum, it's them who goes in to like hold him off. God. It's it's so fucking upsetting. Yeah, it is. That's why they had to do it off screen because they couldn't figure out how this guy <laughs> could fucking beat Kyoraku. And then he threw ice at him. Okay. Uh, and then he backed up over him in a truck. <laughs> <laughs> but he's in like fucking intensive care. God. Yeah. Ukitake shows up to comfort Nanao. Squad 6 is investigating the battle. Rinji is there. And he's just kind of staring at the ice. And Byaku is also there. Byaku's <laughs> like, it was Hyorin Maru. 
I actually have a gap in my notes here because I was so pissed I wouldn't stop yelling in order to take notes. <laughs> There's no doubt it was you and Maru. No one else has an ice sword. Nobody. Uh, nobody. Not my sister, certainly. <laughs> Everyone here agrees that my sister doesn't have an ice sword, right? <laughs> Well, you see, the ice that Hyo Rin Maru makes is so s- s- unique, okay? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's got these yeah, crystals. Technically, Rukia, Rukia is, is, a, is a snow Zanpakuto. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Holy shit. So, Shuhei and Izuru got rinsed by Hitsugaya off screen. This movie sure likes not showing us fights. Yeah, literally every time you could have seen something cool, they cut away from it and don't show you it. Well, I mean, like... The first part of that fight was pretty cool, and then, well, Hitsugaya turned on his Bankai, so it was like 0. .75 of a second left in that fight. <laughs> yeah, but but, I, but I, I wanted to see them get obliterated in, like, graphic movie quality detail. You are right. Yeah, because this thing has money, which is one of the yeah, it's most weird. important differentiating factors between it and the Bount arc, because elsewise, it actually has a lot in common with that. <sighs> There's just, like, a bunch of cuts while people are explaining all this different shit, including Ichigo and Ko at the steps outside the shrine. They decide to just go home and sleep because they were searching all night. (laughs) Captain's meeting. Yamamoto (laughs) says that Hitsugaya is to be killed on sight. (laughs) Do not interact. (laughs) Yeah, Ichigo wakes up mid-afternoon and Ruki is on the phone. She explains that they what they know about Kusaku and the execution order, and then the wall explodes. Uh, and then Ichigo and Rukia leave through the exploded wall and find the two Aran car and Kusaku, and then they fucking cut again. <sighs> Ukitake and Byakuya are watching Kyoraku sleep. Byakuya says, wait, this timeline doesn't fucking make sense at all. Kyoraku fought Hitsugaya while Hitsugaya was fighting these soul reapers in the human world? Wow, what a stupid fucking plot. (laughs) (laughs) Ukitake and Byakuya went to Mayuri and they're like, Mayuri, hack into the super secret archive because this story ain't moving. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, like when Mayuri turns on his 4090. Yeah, he just like buzz saws through their fucking firewall instantly. (laughs) He has some giant fucking PC case with the organ 4090. (laughs) I made it better because it didn't include ray tracing, that thing no one wants. <laughs> There's definitely like a Death Stranding baby in that case. <laughs> Ichigo and Rukia are fighting the twins and Kusaku. Somehow it's not already over. <laughs> yeah, <duh. laughs> He says he was forced to fight in front of Central and was killed by Hitsugaya. Another flashback. Hitsugaya and Kusaku have to fight to decide who gets Kyoren Maru. According to Central 46, it's a guy's like, no, I'll just surrender. And Central 46 is like, no, we're full. We're idiotic dipshits who really want you to fight. And then they're fighting. And then because the writers of this really fucking misunderstood that part of Fist of the North Star, they just <laughs> decide hits a guy a one and all the stealth force like mass impale Kusaku. Yeah, that shit's insane. <laughs> I feel like this backstory would make hits a guy a very different character than he is. Oh, yes. Yes, it would. I think the lesson of Bleach is that on a long enough timeline, we all just become complicit with the right-wing authoritarian government. (laughs) And Kusaku was like, why am I dying? I was such a good little law cock. And then he dies. (laughs) Ichigo somehow saw this flashback through fucking what? The morphogenetic field? Yeah, they they touched swords, and for some reason that let him see all of it for this movie. Yeah, this is some new type shit. It was resonance. The, 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 The Zanpakuto explained it. We never. The fucking we, Ichigo <laughs> starts crying and he goes, Lala! <laughs> and we cut to space where she's becoming goo. Look, you know how martial artists can really only understand each other through their fists? Yeah, it, sure. It, it's like that. <laughs> it's not like any other point in Bleach people clashes on Pacto's, right? No. Okay. Well, just make sure. Is, <laughs> that's not the dumbest part about this fight. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I mean, the dumbest part is that he doesn't instantly kill this dude. Even dumber. Okay. Why is it happening? Yeah, that's a really great question because uh, there was a line on the way into the flashback Mm -hmm. where he explains he's a guy who killed him and now Soul Society has branded him a traitor. 
but somehow he decides to fight Ichigo, and I'm like, your plan already succeeded, right? This was your plan, and it's done. <laughs> Everything's good. Why don't you just leave? He framed it to guy for murder, and every single decision he makes from here on out is random. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the bow yeah. Tark. <laughs> That's that's why just at the end of the movie I started shouting, was this his plan? <laughs> this is maybe this is maybe like even more pathetic than the bound arc in, in a lot of places. <laughs> yeah, like this plan makes less sense than Jinkaria. It's it's not hard to make more sense when you only have to do it for 90 minutes. Right? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> just to be clear, audience. Right here, right now, is when I gave up on the movie. <laughs> <laughs> just like, why can't we both have the same sword? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really bothers me. Like, I referenced the Fist of the North Star, but it, it really does bother me how this is just that, but through, like, idiot filter. Yes. <laughs> Where it's like, Kenshiro, you'll be the successor because the tiger didn't try to kill you. <laughs> it realized it couldn't win and just submitted. But this is like the most, the dumb version of that where it's like, well, you fought, so that means you lose. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he got covered in ice. So yeah, yeah, he got clearly a frosty. Maru chose how the fuck, like, it's not. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> did Hyo and Maru live in that cave? We'll we never this? understand. Look, they didn't show enough of it to explain. They both got the same gotcha pole and only one could leave, okay? <laughs> only one of them gets the waifu. <laughs> yes. This is how they enforce the blockchain. <laughs> <laughs> Manually. With this. How, how, if there's hundreds of soul reapers, uh -huh. how is this a problem ever? <laughs> yeah, also, like, isn't, aren't they a reflection of your fucking soul? Like, right? why, how can two people have them? If anything, you missed the opportunity to make them really gay. I was going to say, that's the problem. Their souls are connected, and soul society is very, very straight. Right. Uh, yeah, I was talking to Bob about how soul society is very Jedi-like in nature, because if they weren't that level of, like, no, all sex is bad sex, then there wouldn't be so much goddamn sexual tension all over <laughs> it. <laughs> But yeah, no, they really missed an opportunity here to explain why they ended up with the same one. Yeah, it's really just that the thing that happens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sometimes Ichigo becomes a black hole. Don't question it. Which uh, Bleach lore does get really weird later with some Zogpakuto stuff, but it make this still doesn't fit with that. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't make any sense at all. Um Kusaku hits him with an avalanche and then an ice dragon and Isigo is frozen in an ice mountain. Kusaku's like, damn, I'm so strong. I'm sure you two twins can handle Rukia. And then he leaves. <laughs> and then Ichigo is in the big thank dimension with Zangetsu. And then Zangetsu explains why Ichigo just saw the fucking flashback. <laughs> and then Zangetsu says, blah, 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 balance, blah, 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 balance. <laughs> And then, and then someone in the editing bay just wakes up who was asleep and hits the play cool Ichigo song button. <laughs> Not yet. We're, we still we still have the flash Ichigo's flashback about his mom dying and about oh, how he made things God. how he was little. He made things hard by not relying on anyone and Hitsugaya is doing it too. And then Ichigo wakes up and Rukia is doing surprisingly good against these two antagonists. I, I don't understand why Zengatsu would care about the band. <laughs> It's, 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 like a, oh my god <laughs> he wakes up and uses bon kai and his theme starts and i'm and i am like oh yeah these two are screwed they're gonna get fucking mulched and gut uh -huh. <laughs> hitsugaya is in the fucking tokyo sewers he's still stumbling around like he's drunk Kusaku is there and he has the MacGuffin and Hitsugaya demands to know what his plan is and then they both trip balls. <laughs> <laughs> we cut back to Ichigo and the MacGuffin is causing spiritual pressure to come all over everything everywhere. Somehow Ichigo didn't instantly delete these two. <laughs> <laughs> they gloat about the Oin waking up and summoning a bunch of hollows like a, ri a ridiculous amount of hollows. Yeah. Like 1,000 heartless Kingdom Hearts 2 amount of hollows. Uh, shit is also popping off on Soul Society. It's, it, there's, it's causing like a lightning storm at the execution grounds, and there's a big report for everyone to prepare for battle, since somehow Hitsugaya and Kusukosuko ended, ended up at that fucking hill. 
where Ichigo fought Byakuya. Yeah, Sokyoku uh, so Hill. Yeah. Sokyoku Hill, yeah. Yeah. Kusaku says the Owen will make him all powerful. As he was dying, the Owen fucking resurrected him somehow. <laughs> so I can't I can't choose, I can't figure out which this is closer to. The plot of Final Fantasy 1 or Cooler's Revenge. <laughs> yeah, was could the Owen flying through space? <laughs> Like, he's like, oh, the Owen can transport matter and energy across time and space. So I'm like, oh, cool. So by the end of this movie, we will create a perfect loop uh -huh. where the resolution is we use the Owen to resurrect Kusaka. This, yes. Right? Uh -huh. Because we have an object in our story that can accomplish look, that. Look at these interesting plot <laughs> ramifications that you can write so many things around. This t transporting people and things through space and time. It, it, it also bugs me that this thing is explicitly just the Hogyaku. It's just it's just that with a different name now. It has a different name. I hate this so much. And it's a Hogoku with even more random powers that don't make sense. <laughs> uh, anyway, he got resurrected by the Owen and he decided he wanted to go get the Owen and he wants to get the guy to cut the Owen, which will blow up Soul Society, no, I guess? No, what he says is cut this in two. And he's a guy who basically says, why? And he goes, because once you cut this in two, everything will be purified. <sighs> Uh, that totally happens, right? Ikaku, Yumichika, and Renji show up. Kusaku calls Ikaku a cock. Like, out of nowhere. He's just like, fuck you. You specifically. Yeah. <laughs> and then when Ikaku attacks, hits a guy who blocks it. Cut to the human world. Ichigo's gonna fight all these hollows. Then Ishida shows up and says, 1,200 a second and just obliterates <laughs> all of them. Finally <laughs> confirms that he is, in fact, a white mono player because he just day of judgments <laughs> the yes! whole board. Absolutely. <laughs> fire twin twice tries to hit them with a fireball, but Chad steps up and uses El Directo and blows it away. They tell Ichigo to go to Urahara to get to Soul Society. Uh, the three of us can handle the twins. Guess what we don't get to fucking see? <laughs> yep. This... I was so fucking excited for Ishida and Chad to fight people in a movie. Mm-hmm. No, we need to show more of Soul Society nonsense. Hitsugaya is fighting half of Soul Society at once, but then a bunch of captains show up. And Kusaku keeps going, Help me do genocide! Help! <laughs> Come on! Ichigo shows up and prevents the captains from who were not going to move themselves. They were just going to send all their guys to get him to get killed right, by his right. guy. Yeah. I don't know why. Go, scrub army. <sighs> yeah, I don't. I don't get it. Uh, Ichigo calls all of them little rule following bitches. And then Soifan shows up to tell him to stay out of it. Uh, and then Yamamoto shows up. Yamamoto is here to explain the plot. Kusaku was resurrected. Now he wants revenge. He wants to become king, I guess. Yeah, the well, that's I, new. I think Eisen Soul said society, that, so I guess yeah. that this that's this guy's goal too. Yeah, that's this guy's goal now, and it's like, wait, what? Why do you want to be the ruler of Soul Society? What? He he tries to use the Owen, but Hitsugaya attacks him. Everyone's perplexed that he isn't on Kusaku's side because they're all fucking idiots. Rukia and then each and Ichigo then have to explain exactly what Hitsugaya is thinking for all these emotionally ignorant dipshits. Oh Imagine Ichigo like putting his hand on your shoulder and explaining like emotional intelligence to you. <laughs> like this whole sequence, all I could hear was the robot devil from Futurama. <laughs> <laughs> You can't just have your characters announce how they feel. <laughs> that makes me angry. <laughs> Kusaku then says, okay, I can cut the Owen. I didn't need you after all. Uh, he says he couldn't uh, do it before, but now he can for some reason. Well, he's always getting stronger. Uh, uh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> he chops it and it forms a big pillar of light. Ichigo steps in front of Hitsugaya and tells him to stop being a distant dipshit and then punches him in the face. And he's, once again, imagine being lectured about this by fucking Ichigo. <laughs> uh, we flash back to the flashback he had earlier in the movie again. Ichi and it's, it's basically just, Ichigo learned that when he does stupid things, people worry about him. 
Kusaku became a big dumb ice dragon that looks like shit. Yeah. Why? Oh, Why did he become God. a big dumb ice dragon? I don't know. Was, was this the power of the Hoi? Is that it? King? Is that him being the king? <laughs> Is this what I, ge I guess I guess he like fused with his Hyorin Maru, I guess. I told you guys the Hyorin has lots and lots of powers. <laughs> <laughs> you think it'd let him alter space and time. <laughs> right? You think nope. they'd do that? Big ice dragon. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I have an object that can move an unlimited amount of matter and energy through space and time. Better turn into a giant <laughs> ice dragon. What fucking Yu-Gi-Oh card do you want to die as? <laughs> this looks so much worse than any Yu-Gi-Oh card that has existed in 20 years. Oh, oh yeah, no, it is. <laughs> it is really terrible looking. It's animated bad. It's line detail is bad. It looks unreasonably shitty in a movie that looks pretty good overall. Kenpachi runs in because he wants to kill it, because of course he does. <laughs> Kenpachi just explodes a hole in this dude's chest, and it's like, what, already? It's over? Roll credits. But uh, <laughs> Kusaku says he's invincible, and Kenpachi's like, fuck yes, somebody I can't easily kill. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and then he cuts Kenpachi and knocks him down and shoots a bunch of icicles at him and then flies off before Kenpachi can get up unhurt and eviscerate him. He lands on a building and starts freezing everything, I guess. The twins show back up. We don't even get to see them fight Ishida and Chad, but they got worked because they're all beaten up. Yeah. Uh, they beg forgiveness, but he just freezes them and starts to make even more ice. And there's ice everywhere. And there's a big ice tree that's growing all over Soul Society. Because right then, right then is, I think, when we figure out that they're actually named Yin and Yang. <laughs> Oh yeah, my. I don't even think I wrote their names down because oh I think they God. say it. That's the only time I, they say I it. I missed it. Oh yeah. my God. One of them says, like, she calls her Yang, and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Oh yeah, they're named Yin and Yang. Oh my God. What <laughs> hacks? Oh my God. <laughs> but there's ice everywhere, and Yamo's like, we have to stop them, and then stands still. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All the Soul Reapers go in, they all do big attacks, they get blocked by the ice, they all get blown away, even captains. There's a shot specifically showing Renji getting honed. <laughs> then Kusaku uses, like, a subspace emissary bomb to make, like, a big dimensional dome that starts to spread? Yeah. And then Mayuri gives a big dumb techno babble speech that boils down to stop him or we all die. <laughs> the sky inside the dome is red. Rangiku and Hitsugaya are buried in rubble and crawl out. So do Rukia and Ichigo. Renji is also there. Kusaku made a big dumb castle. Yoruichi and Soifan show up and are like, we're here to kill Kusaku. Ikaku and Yumichika are also here. It's just everybody we've actually seen fight so that the, the uh, writers know what they can do. They gotta attack the castle. The castle summons hollows. Yoruchi and Soifan say they'll handle the hollows. That seems like it ought to be something that all the lieutenant and lower level people do instead mm -hmm. of the two captain level people, but fucking whatever. Yeah, I mean, they, they kill them all within an in, instant, so and then, whatever. And then we cut, and we pretend they're still doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Rangiku gives Hitsugai his Hayori back. They charge the castle. Renji, Rukia, and Ichigo are one team, and Ichigo uh, Yumichika, Ikaku, Rangiku, and Hitsugaya are another. The Fire Twin got turned into a big dumb monster and attacks Ichigo's team. Renji Bonkai's and lets Ichigo and Rukia climb higher on the castle using it as like stairs. The Lightning One attacks the Hitsugaya team. Soifan instantly kills the Fire One, but it respawns because of the MacGuffin. And the Hitsugaya team are also having like difficulty with the Lightning One. Then Kenpachi wakes up and cuts the entire castle in half. <laughs> this is such a great Kenpachi movie. <laughs> For a couple seconds. For literally one yeah. minute. <laughs> yeah. Ichigo and Rukia get to the top. Renji too. There's a bunch of Minos and other hollows. Everybody's killing hollows. So I forgot there was one more moment in this movie that made me scream. Just scream how upset I was at the movie and we're about to hit it. Uh, we get a money shot of Rukia using her Shikai to kill Hollows, but they all just respawn because of the Oin. Both teams decide to focus their attacks to make e openings so Ichigo and Hitsugaya can get through. Uh-huh. <sighs> they sure are. 
Ikaku says, well, I can make an opening myself and use his bond kind. He's like, no, no, you tell anybody I can do this. I, he's doing it in front of everyone. <laughs> the whole bit is that he hasn't shown anyone. And I... <laughs> yeah, even Kenpachi is here unconscious. The main guy, he doesn't want to see it. I <laughs> It's, oh. it's an anime movie. It's not canon. It's so I just, stupid. I just, how did they keep doing this to me? I thought Kyoruku was going to be the bottom, right? Where they're just like, and then he got owned. That's seemingly feasible for Kyoruku to get owned that quickly. <laughs> and then this happened, and I thought, oh, wow, there's a whole dimension of upset that I didn't realize this movie could contain. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> We're about to go to something else really annoying. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just gonna pass out. <laughs> There's lots of people fighting hollows shots. All the minnows shoot at Ichigo and Co, but Byakuya stops it and then like kills a billion hollows with his fucking bonkai. All the captains are outside are like suppressing the field with their bonkais, which is really funny because uh, what is it? I, I forgot his name already. Mayuri. Yeah, Mayuri is just using the poison baby to sort of walk into <laughs> yeah. it. They're that like, was the moment I remembered that existed. Yeah, I like that part. I'm like, Mayuri, you can't just pump cyanide into the <laughs> explosion. That's <laughs> what? Yeah, your bonkai is a fighting one, but not this kind of fighting. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. I don't know. <laughs> <sighs> so Byakuya, Ikaku, and Renji all cut through the billion hollows with their bonkais. Ichigo and hits a guy ahead for Kusaku. Ichigo puts on the fucking hollow mask. As if he needed any help to get through all of those hollows. He can move faster than light. That's his whole thing. There's no way any of them would have stopped him. <laughs> The, the dumb ice dragon shoots other dumb ice dragons. <laughs> Ichigo gets up in his face and blocks his big beam, hits a guy, ties him up with Yoren Maru, and then Ichigo embeds his sword in Kusaku's face and just gets his head off. Yeah. And all, all the hollows freeze and the ice dragon collapses and the dome fucking dissolves. Why did that work? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> EC gets to attend Showasa affects time and space or something. I don't care. <laughs> it's over. Ichigo says hits a guy. It can handle it from here. And Kusaku's downgraded to human again. And they're going to fight. And they clash. And there's another flashback. And Kusaku lost. And he dies. And everybody kind of reacts like this is a happy ending. Even though it really fucking isn't one. Yeah. Uh, then the Oween reforms. So it can never be mentioned again. <laughs> yeah, that was really weird. They bothered doing that. Like. We don't need another MacGuffin in Bleach. We have plenty. They're going to hang another whole movie off of the Oween. I'm really afraid one of the uh, filler arcs is like Oween. <laughs> I'm also afraid. <laughs> oh, they're they're like, all the captains are standing around and the lieutenants and they're, they're like, oh, it's finally over. Hey, you think any of us should reflect on the fact that this whole thing was caused by the general nature of how we've structured our society? No? Well, Nobody thinks well, we should think about that? Well, well, don't worry, Agro, because Eisen took direct action and killed all of Central 47, and they never replace any of those people. So. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, that, that entire branch of the government's just gone and good because they keep getting blamed for literally the worst things they ever do. <laughs> yeah. It, it reminds me of, and this is a really fucking specific thing they remind me of, they remind me of later Mega Man X games where there's some ambiguous leadership that we never see that is giving X and zero orders. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, we can't do that. That's against the regulations. Whose regulations? Shut up. We got to do the game now. <laughs> Ichigo says a bunch of dumb shit. He says, Kusaku died peacefully because he got a fair fight this time. He's like, he probably didn't. You probably you just made that up. <laughs> Like the, his dream wasn't to win that fight. It was it was maybe to not have to fight his best friend to have an ice sword. Yep. Then Ichigo says another bunch of dumb shit and Hitsugaya laughs at it and is like, it's, it's not Toshiro, it's Captain Hitsugaya. But I'm s credits roll. And then po there's a post credit scene. Hitsugaya visits Kusaku's grave, which is in the human world, I guess. Yeah, don't worry That's about it. That's strange. <laughs> he thanks Rangigu for everything she did. And I'm like, she didn't really didn't fucking do anything. Yeah. She held your shirt for a while. Man, imagine if they actually wrote a, like, it's a Gaia movie. That'd be neat. 
<laughs> uh, and then they leave. The end. It's over. I'm really glad they came up with a MacGuffin that can travel through space and time and did something that definitely fits that skill set to set up an interesting climax moment to this film as they have to solve a problem. No, it, it should go hit an ice dragon in the head with his sword. <laughs> that ice dragon could summon hollows. I hate this. <laughs> I hate this so much. I am so bad at this film. That's that's really it's tragic, Dan. I'm sorry. We're going to jump right to this segment. How excited are you to continue watching Bleach? I'm pretty excited because it's not a movie that's filler. <laughs> so that's that's feeling pretty great right now. I got to tell you. We just escaped the, the filler pit uh-huh. in the real series. So, oh, man, it's going to be a huge upgrade. So what, what, yeah. one to ten. I would say ten. All I right. would say ten right now. Right. If we were going into another movie, it, it would be zero. I know that's not between one and ten, but that's what it would be. <laughs> God, I hope no movies are this bad again. This There's is... no way. This is this almost yeah, this comes was... off as like made by Nazi scientists to be the most vitriolic and terrible movie it could possibly be. <laughs> All right, let's just do our more fun segments, like Best Dressed Award. Uh, I'm going to be greedy and go first. Uh, I'm going to choose Ichigo in his cool purple jeans and studded belt look. Oh, it's really good. He's such a punk rocker. That is a good look. Yes, and then he even put the jacket on later. It's it's great. Oh, it's fantastic. Of course he owns a guitar in this movie. <laughs> look at that <laughs> outfit. <laughs> uh, Dr. Iker, who, who do you think is best dressed? Uh, I, I'm going to go for Hitsugaya who, uh, upon chasing the guy who stole the, the Oween, decides to start wearing his cloak that he ripped off of him, which he definitely had to cut down to size before he started wearing it. <laughs> this was a conscious multi-step decision. Look, he just folded up a whole lot. <laughs> It, it really it, it it communicated his decision to not tell anybody what he was doing or thinking or ask anybody for any information about the situation or allay anybody's fears that he was betraying the 13 court guards by putting on the exact same cloak of the guy who just wrecked the procession. What an awful movie. What a fucking <laughs> terrible movie. Dan, who, uh, who do you think was the best dressed? Uh, so when uh, Ichigo's in his room at one point, Rukia pops out of the closet in this really cute white outfit. It's super great. I love it. It's adorable. It's it's good. Uh, obviously, I would have chosen Ichigo's punk rocker outfit because it's purple. <laughs> but Rukia's cute white outfit fucking rules. That moment, I was like, that's an awesome outfit. Oh, they're showing the height difference between her and Ichigo, and I'm now remembering that Ruki is taller than my girlfriend <laughs> by half an inch. <laughs> what a moment. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Chris, what, what do you think? Who is the best dressed? Uh, Ashida has this one outfit he's wearing where he has like a, 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 like a green jacket and a scarf. I like it. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, all the main cast got cool redesigns, like all the human world cast. Yeah, yeah I sure wish they had gotten to fucking do something. I know. Yeah, been awesome. <laughs> I sure wish this movie wasn't 90% like transitionary cuts. Mm -hmm. uh, Agro, did, did you find time in your day to watch that first movie? No, I have not. Okay, so the cool thing about that first movie is like it has cool outfits and our main cast gets to like go do things in the human world and just hang out and here's a mall. It's... Uh, I love the vibes of that. These outfits feel really cool and I wish we got to see moments like that film. No. I none thought of that. that. Nothing good. I thought this was going to be more of that. <laughs> I, I was really excited to watch this film. Not only because it wasn't, you know, five whole episodes of bleach but also because it might have more money which this did this had more money than filler bleach by a decent chunk but that is just the worst stupidest thing i've watched for chucking bleach <laughs> chris did you bring any trivia uh is this true or false uh a soul society pretty obviously based on the shinsengumi but the visors are actually all based on other series that were running in Shonen Jump at the time, with uh, Love Aikawa, be, uh, the guy with the star afro, being based on Bobobo, and uh, Shinji himself being based on the main character of Gintama. Hmm. Like, very, very loosely. But they're, they're, the visors are meant to represent the different series in Shonen Jump at the time. Bob. 
you could decide whether this, that's real or bullshit. This sounds like a fan theory I've heard. But I'm going to go ahead and say it's real anyway. True. Dan. False. I don't buy that the visors are based on anything. Aggro. This is definitely a thing I heard back in the day. And uh, like there's strong evidence for like half of them. But I am, I'm going to say no. This is a Marilyn Manson rib tier thing. Ha! <laughs> Uh, correct. I made th- I made it up. Okay. I, I also I also heard the fan theory, and I'm like, I'm gonna bring that and say it's real. <laughs> <laughs> it's great how all of these fan theories I heard were so long ago. I can't remember. I what's you were real. gonna say so much smarter than this movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I guess that means we have to rate this movie now. It's never been easier. All right, Dan, go ahead. Zero. <laughs> I hate this movie. This is the worst shonen movie I've ever seen. This is so unbelievably bad. It starts rolling around in the mud with live action adaptations and it is not winning that fight. I hate this movie. It was horrible to watch. And it makes it even more cruel because a lot of the, a lot of these shonen films and live action adaptations, a lot of the problem comes through in the budget. This had money. And it just didn't use it well. It didn't show me any of the sh- fights I wanted to see. And Orihime's face looks really weird in that one shot. <laughs> but there are a lot of good faces in this. You know, we got a good Mayuri face even. We got good faces. But no, horrible film. Stupid as hell. Jesus, I hope I never find out who wrote this. That's fair. <laughs> Chris, what do you think? <sighs> Zero, this is really bad. <laughs> Like it, the events of this movie are stupid. That's one thing. Yeah. But the way it's structured to show us nothing you'd want to see, Mm -hmm. like it cuts away from every single thing you'd want to see. I've never seen anything just so bizarrely hostile to the viewers before. Fuck this movie. Yeah. I think I also have to give it a zero. It fails on every account. Like, I, I feel like every bit of interesting new Bleach lore I could learn is actually just completely false and made up. And like Chris was saying, it's just structured in a way that's mean. <laughs> uh, Dr. Agro, what did you think? <laughs> I have uh, an inordinate amount of love for seeing TV anime with movie budgets. Uh-huh. So I'm going to give this a two for having a bunch <laughs> of really cool shots in it. You know, I almost did that as well, but I was like, I can't. It's not enough. <laughs> it, the, You know, I do appreciate a lot of the imagery shown, uh, divested of what I experienced to be shown it. <laughs> um, you could make a really cool AMV out of this movie. You could. Yeah, absolutely. And then and, you'd just then, be implying that all this cool stuff happens, but you don't have the time to show it in your AMV. Right, <laughs> and you'd be tricking people into watching this movie, which is morally corrupt. Let's, <laughs> let's be real. Uh, I would like to know, that means the first movie, which got a total of 69 points, dropped t- one movie later to two, a total of two points. Yeah, it, it, I forgot to mention, this is on our patented tightness scale, which goes zero to 25. This could have had 100 points, and it got two. The first movie's pretty cool. I really hope the third one's like that. Hopefully. I don't remember it all. I remember the fourth movie, but not this the third one. I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared, too. I looked at pictures of it on the back of your uh, freshly printed uh, 4K Blu-ray collection. It's just regular Blu-ray. Sorry, sorry. Four-pack yes. Blu-ray <laughs> collection that had the first four movies. Uh, I, I wish that was out before we watched the first one. I know. I kind of want to go back. Yeah. That was a good time. Unfortunately, we can't go back. Agro still has your Blu-rays. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. We'll see you next month for actual Canon Bleach content. It's going to be great compared to this, ladies and gentlemen. Right, Bob? Yeah, sure. Okay. They're not going to have an Oween when we get there. <laughs> God, imagine. I don't need them to have something else along with the Hogoku. It's already enough. <laughs> I was just, just like, this super Hokyoku allows me to go through time and space. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I just, I tighten the, the the rubber around my arm and get the lethal injection right there on the spot. <laughs> the executive producers for this Gig Boots video are Esme, Ely Broyles, 
Spaceman Spiff, Red Blaze 27, Brendan O'Sullivan, A Reminder for a Symphony of War, Cooper Tank, Very Best Plot, Iconic Bane, and Rado. Thank you very much to our executive producers, and also these guys. If you want to become an executive producer or normal patron, head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today.